affected by a life-changing event. Additionally, many denominations and organizations have a specialization in the disaster relief world. And whereas in light of recent unfortunate events, many places of worship nationwide are working to take the necessary measures to prepare their congregations for not only natural disasters, but human-caused disasters as well, specifically active shooters. And whereas praise and preparedness provides congregations with the resources needed to prepare before disaster strikes, by acting on our simple message to prepare, plan, and stay informed, congregations can help reduce the impact of any large-scale emergency on their organization and members. And whereas participating members from each place of worship receive special training, which includes disaster preparedness, fire and utility control, disaster first aid, medical operations, light search and rescue, disaster psychology, terrorism, and the incident command system. And whereas Faith Deliverance Christian Church responded to the challenge and led the way for more faith-based organizations to be involved in the Praise and Preparedness Initiative. By engaging in preparedness activities with Clayton County Fire and Emergency Services, Division of Emergency Management, this congregation has taken steps to protect their facility, its members, and the surrounding community. Now, therefore, I, Sona Singleton Gregory, Commissioner on behalf of Clayton County Board of Commissioners, do recognize and honor Faith Deliverance Christian Church for their commitment in joining the Praise and Preparedness Initiative, which will help many different people during a time of crisis and need. In witness thereof, I have here unto set my hand and caused the seal of Clayton County, Georgia, to be affixed this 16th day of October in the year 2018. If the commissioners would remain standing, as well as members of the Fire and EMS Department for the acknowledgement, recognizing the contributions of Brown Elementary to severe weather preparedness, as presented by Fire Chief and EMA Director Landry Murkison. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, for allowing me the opportunity to, to recognize our next group of those um, individuals who have jumped out there and helped us bring awareness to preparedness. So now we're going to go to the other end of the spectrum and, and recognize some very special elementary students from Brown Elementary. Um, this year during National Preparedness Month, the Office of Emergency Management teamed with Brown Elementary to have their students develop posters um, to bring awareness to preparedness. Um, those were narrowed down to four winners and we would like to recognize those four winners this evening. So as I call your name, if you'll please come to the front with your, with your painting and um, please bring all the family along with you. So, in the best overall painting, we have Christian Payon Mendieta. For most original, we have Isaiah Jimenez Luna. For most valuable information, we have Cairo Limbrick. And finally, our most artistic is Chloe Williams. And I believe representing Brown, we have the assistant principal, Ms. McDonald's here with us as well.
Mr. Chairman, the next item is a discussion item. Board discussion on more martyr. All right, at this time we're gonna have a discussion item on the board on the more Marta. And uh, Commissioner Edmondson asked for this to be on the agenda, so I will let him. Uh, Mr. Griffin, if you come forward, I will let him. Uh, you gonna interject something? CO. Okay, uh, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Edmondson. Uh, the floor to you. Th thank you, Chairman. The, um, the Board of Commissioners last month had a discussion item on the topic of Marta. Um, and during that time, Commissioner Warner said something that resonated with me, which is that whatever decisions we make along public transportation should be made as a body, not unilateral discussions. And so I thought it would be a good idea to, to continue that conversation. At the time, um, the county attorney, Jack Hancock, who was explaining to us uh, some of the legal ramifications and legal context of public transportation in MARTA on that Tuesday night, and it wasn't until the following Thursday that the MARTA board uh, actually voted on what's been dubbed more MARTA. And so I asked uh, Mr. Griffin and Ms. Abdul Salam, they are the two MARTA board appointees representing Clayton County on the 13 member MARTA board uh, that, that manages the operations of MARTA to come tell us a little bit about and give us some context and answer any questions and maybe get some direction. Um, uh, Mr. Griffin, thank you very much for coming. I got a regrets from, from Ms. Roberta just a couple hours ago that she couldn't make it after all. Um, so I don't mean to put you on the spot in any way, shape, or form. This is meant to be informal interaction, but I just wanted to get our heads around your perspective of the more MARTA agreement and whether that affects Clayton County or doesn't and where we are with our projects and just going to have an open much. conversation. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. And let me say I will always come. Uh, and, and give you a report anytime and an update. Let me begin with, with where the uh, Clayton County project is. You requested uh, a priority on commuter rail. And of course, that, that timeline, I think you've been provided with the entire timeline. Right now, that project is undergoing environmental review, which uh, those of us that have been around projects that involve federal funding know the environmental review. and. And this one is fairly extensive because we're talking about commuter rail from East Point, to, I mean from uh, the East Point Station to Mountain View. And of course, we're looking at it, Amarta is looking at the entire route through Clayton County, which would be down to Lovejoy. But the, the environmental impact statement, of course, involves uh, additional right-of-way and, and additional highway bridges and, and all kind of issues there that are being looked at and part of the environmental. We think we can, get, can do it with the, with the short version of the environmental review at this point, and that's the one that we're pursuing. Apparently, the, uh, Marta has talked to FTA, and uh, the feeling is that they can do that. So that project is moving forward. And while I'm up here, let me just, I, I'm real excited about, you know, we are moving forward with the shelters and uh, in Clayton County, we still have got a ways to go, but uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have 622 bus stops in the county. 17 of those have bus shelters and four with benches and seats. MARTA board will be considering, I think you've been briefed on the contract advertising benches, uh, which called for the addition of a number of benches in the county and trash cans, which will be paid for by the company that installs the advertising. As you might recall, when you, we came into the MARTA system, the existing company, uh, Outdoor Advertising, uh, Outdoor uh, out in Front Advertising, which does DeKalb and Fulton and Atlanta, would not accept adding Clayton County to their contract. They're the ones that erect the advertising shelters. That's the shelters with the, all the advertising in it. They would not ex do Clayton County. We subsequently went out for bids at MARTA. I received no bids. And so uh, then 
there was a negotiation in it into and have been working with your staff and 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 you board members uh, on resolving some of that we did find a company now that uh, that the Marty board will be considering to build to put in benches they'll be advertising benches and trash cans they'll have uh, signs on them that tell if there's any damage or anything they're responsible for maintaining them uh, the county will be asked to pick up the, to service the counties or cities will be asked to service the trash cans I think as it's being done now and the things but that is exciting we also have an additional uh, 23 shelters underway and most significantly I think is that I wanted to make sure everybody understood that any entity and uh, if you look at some of the programs that we do and you see pictures of different kinds of shelters many cities CIDs and others actually build the shelters and there's been an, I know a request from some of the ministers out here as to whether they can build a shelter anybody can build a shelter if they want to the question has come up as to whether or not somebody can pay for a shelter to be installed the answer is yes uh, Marta would not be involved in that transaction but Marta will put anybody interested in contact with with the contractor that does the Marta stations and uh, and uh, be glad to do that I think that would help speed up the amenities uh, and uh, out here on at least the benches right now we're moving forward under the guidelines which 40 boardings a day and that's the top priority top 40 boardings a day plus where there's special needs senior citizen centers health care facilities and those kind of facilities all the priorities all of we've got the rest of the ones that are under consideration for Clayton County current under review and hopefully uh, those will move forward as you know Marta appropriated more money last year for uh, benches and shelters and amenities generally and so anyway that's moving forward and hopefully we will see some additional shelters spring up in the county uh, that's that's two issues I wanted to report on now the third one that you ask in the, uh, is the more Marta and what that means how it affects Clayton County more Marta is is the result Clayton County set a style y'all came up with something out here that nobody had ever done before and that was you wanted a half of your penny that you vote that we voted for Marta to go into a lockbox that would be for projects that were determined that Clayton County wanted to pursue unfortunately Clayton County's retail sales are not hopefully they're improving but right now only about two million dollars a month goes into the lockbox Clayton County sales tax collections are only about four million dollars a year uh, on, I mean four million dollars a month on average and if you look at at uh, the cap they're about eight million and, and then Fulton and Atlanta is about 15 million a month so you see the difference uh, in in the revenue stream but that's going into the lockbox the more Marta program that Atlanta created uh, they also voted for one half cent addition with that money going into their lockbox if you will and they out of that the a bunch of projects were identified now this gets confusing to all of us to understand where the project came from and and how they were arrived at and what Marta voted on on uh, October 4th the projects Marta is response has a responsibility for transit in the metropolitan area in Fulton the cab and and Clay and Marta has a plan of things that need to be done identify corridors and whatever and we worked with the city in coming up with a list of projects uh, our staff worked with the city in coming up with a list of projects uh, that would go to the voters of, of uh, Atlanta now this was not a big huge issue that the, the board dealt with extensively or, or uh, it was a list of projects that Atlanta wanted and Marta <coughs> felt would increase improve transit a bunch of those projects were not the things that you've heard in the news the last two weeks where uh, that Marta voted on but a lot of these were simply improvements in the existing system improving crosstown routes uh, more crosstown routes there are very few also uh, additional service Marta is faced just like everybody else with on-time performance because of traffic on our streets and they we're working uh, and Atlanta's working to try to improve the signalization and everything to speed up buses downtown but if you've been to Midtown lately there's no way to get through there 
or rapidly. There's always uh, what one and a half million square feet of office space is currently under construction. So anyway, so a lot of these things were, were done there. The other thing was station improvements. There are a whole number, well, nearly every station in, in Atlanta is being redone. Those are, stations are old. They, are, they need to be rehabilitated uh, and upgraded. Atlanta is particularly in, interested in the aesthetics of how they look for the visitors, and, and that is it's part of the priority. Of course, the other thing uh, uh, is, uh, <coughs> let's see, uh, um, the, uh, the L, uh, light rail transit along the Campbellton Road in the Beltline corridor and in the streetcar extension and along with the Clifton corridor project. I think you've all heard a lot about those in the past few weeks. Uh, the uh, Campbellton Road project, uh, of course, is uh, important to a lot of people to speed up connections uh, from that corridor uh, into Atlanta. Uh, the Beltline is to connect, uh, uh, the, uh, of course, the ring around Atlanta, and some money was allocated to that. Anyway, there's a plan put out there. First off, the plan was voted on, and then it had to be refined. Everything that's being voted on was in the plan, and what was voted on. Now that's being refined. MARTA came up with the things that they felt were probably the best for transit, uh, and, uh, or a, a list of projects. And then that went to Atlanta. And then Atlanta uh, and MARTA negotiated out a plan, and that's what came before the board. And uh, there was lively lobbying all the way around. I think I was getting 150 or 200 emails a day from Emory, Carter, and, uh, and the, uh, the Beltline. But Atlanta and uh, MARTA uh, negotiated out what was good for transit and good for Atlanta. And that's the projects that were voted on by the board last month. Those projects are not necessarily, you know, uh, fixing to be funded or anything else. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Edmondson, your question basically revolved around, I think, about the, an amendment to the MARTA contract to, to incorporate the more Atlanta projects. It's my understanding that uh, that will come. There will be an amendment to the MARTA contract that incorporates those projects with MARTA's money. Clayton County's, um, when they joined MARTA, Clayton County's information was incorporated into the contract. But this is new money and it's, and if the cab uh, passes another referendum, they will have to do the same with the new, new uh, avenues of, of transit. Mr. Uh, Griffin. Yes, sir. Just uh, on that note, help me, help me get my head around it. You said at the beginning, it's complicated and comprehensive and, 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 and last week, commissioner elect DeMont Davis and I met with <laughs> commissioners from DeCab and talked about MARTA and talked about DeCab's interest in projects and we talked about Clayton's interest and, and it was partly his idea to, to, to have this open discussion on sure. the topic and sure. um, what I can't get my head around is that Clayton County voted by referendum in 2014 for this half penny that as you said is in our lockbox for projects. Now. City of Atlanta voted in 2016 for, as you said, for the sales tax to fund, the half penny sales tax to fund a list of projects that, as you said, has been a hot topic of debate and politic in for the last year or so. So um, I, I'm trying to understand how they got to the front of the line before us or to cab and what is MARTA or what are our board members doing to advocate for Clayton County's project? I spent a whole pot of coffee this weekend reading HB 930 from cover to cover and taking notes and it's a uh, I'm not a lawyer thank goodness but uh, it's hard to get my head around but it seems like that may have something to do with this where they have Atlanta has discretion on how their money is spent whereas Clayton County does not you have discretion in fact you made it you made a decision when when you came to us when you came to the model and and said that this board wanted the rail line uh, from uh, East Point to Mountain View. That was the, the, the plan that you wanted. At that point, that was put into 
to move them. Now, there are other things going on in Clayton County. That's not the only thing because, uh, you know, if, if Clayton County doesn't concentrate on our heavy routes and, and dealing with some of the routes that we have now, which are very, we have some of the most heavily used routes in the system in Clayton County. So all of those, those other things are being considered too. But the priority that y'all established was that you wanted that rail line from East Point to Mountain View. And that is the one that I was described at the beginning that's moving it forward. That's in the environmental review stage now. Now these projects, part of these, most of these, a lot of these projects on Mo Atlanta will have to go through the same process. I mean, this is, remember, the Mo Atlanta is a 40 year plan, mm -hmm. 40 years. So I don't know, but I suspect something's gonna change in 40 years about that too. <laughs> I, I just suspect that. But you know, again, right now, that's what is, is moving forward and that's what we will begin working on. Uh, at this point in March. Now, that will come out. That will come to you ultimately. It'll come, you know, again, the ATL. That's a whole new umbrella that's been put over MARTA and everybody else. In fact, they become uh, the designated source for, I don't know, four classes of federal funds. Uh, and don't ask me to explain all the, the different funding uh, avenues there, but part of those will actually flow through ATL. But at this point, the, the projects that are moving forward in MARTA, there's not a feeling that ATL is going to interfere with any of those since they're already going. Uh, I think that, in fact, I think Mr. Tomlinson uh, in one of his early presentations said anything that was not approved prior to 12-31 or prior to 1-1-18 would have to go through ATL, and he's right. right. We agree with that. But at the same time, I don't think anybody, including Mr. Thompson, feel that that will be a huge issue uh, at the time. Technically and legally, that's exactly what will happen. The projects will funnel up an, another level. Now, Mr. Chairman, I don't know who from Clayton County is on that board, uh, but, I, uh, but I know we've got somebody, uh, a couple of people on there, I'm sure. Mr. Griffin. Yes. Yes, uh, ma'am. The half penny. Yes, ma'am. That's in the lockbox. Yes, ma'am. Supposedly. Yes, ma'am. Clayton yes, County. Are they using that for the more Atlanta? No, no. They and in fact, in they fact, if you you get you get an accounting every month, it shows you how much money you came was collected from Clayton County, how much money went into that lockbox, and any that was spent out of it for any of the per planning purposes. Let me say one other thing. MARTA has made some changes with all of the effort right now. MARTA has faced with the same situation that every governmental entity I think is faced with, and that's finding qualified people at salaries we pay. But, uh, and one of the issues that I've been concerned with since I got on the board is how do we draw, make a decision between what we contract for and what we hire to do? And uh, the decision has been made in these projects because of not only more Atlanta, but because of Clayton County's project, there has been a consultant, consultant engineer hired to work on Clayton County's mm -hmm. project. So, I mean, that's a person, I don't know if you've met him yet, I can't recall his name right now, <coughs> but there's an engineer, I mean, there's a consultant that's gonna be working with, with us. There's another consultant that's gonna be working with, uh, uh, with Atlanta, and uh, of course, DeKalb, uh, all of our board meetings are occupied by all the people from the cap. Uh, now that the belt line died down, uh, we have an hour of public hearings from people from south of cap that are waiting on their rail line. That was, you know, well, it's been, what, 45 years in the making. How and many uh, projects do we have? Does Clayton County have on the list? Right now, you're, you're back, you got the main one, but we've got the, uh, the improvement of existing <coughs> routes, particularly the, uh, the routes across the county, the Riverdale, uh, Mara, uh, the, that one, the 85 Carter, and then uh, a couple of new connections that will be with South Fulton to connect, connect us better with South Fulton because there's there are jobs there. Uh, in other words, the, historically, Mara has moved north-south. Well, everybody does not want to go downtown Atlanta. You know, people want to go other places. 
And so the east-west is, is very important to us. And so that is uh, one of the things that's in, in uh, that more attention. Right. Will you let them know at one of your meetings that I would like to hear more talk about rail for Clayton County. Okay. You know, that sure. was mentioned. Uh, th the chairman of the board came here, stood here, and said in tw 2020 or something that rail should be running in Clayton County and all. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I mean, it, it wasn't in writing. Ms. Hamming, you know, you're, you're right. But, there, you know, you and I saw a project that I think I wish ATL would consider for us and not charge to us, but to utilize this rail line out here. I think it's important to understand that commuter rail, commuter rail does not use that rail line. You've got 60 feet and then two more rail lines in order to run commuter rail. That's only if it's a non-federally qualified, well, non-automated. It's just 30 feet if it's a federally 30 qualified. 30 feet and then two more lines. 30 or 60 feet. Or you can build a wall. If you build a big, you know, barrier to separate the commuter rail from the train, you can do that. And, and I, again, I just keep hearing them talk about buses, buses, more buses, and can all. I, I really okay. would like point. to hear them. Well, Ms. Hammock, as, as you probably noticed, anything. North Fulton County, now they, they are not lacking for sales tax revenue. North Fulton was going to want heavy rail, you know, on up 400 to Roswell. They changed their plans when they saw the price of it. They said, we can't afford it. So they're going now with a, a BRT. Now, fortunately, the DOT was expanding 400 at the time. The BRT will run down the express lanes, and the boarding will be inside on the median of 400. Not so the bus does not have to get off, you know, work on, uh, get off the interstate, and then get back. I mean, on 400, and then get back on. So that is a that's a, something that came about. Uh, up in North Fulton because when they saw the price of commuter rail, uh, heavy rail, like well, we'll, we'll take light. Yeah, <laughs> we'll take Mr. Light Griffin, rail. I think the overarching thing that this board wants to make sure that you take back to the board as a whole is that we expect our expectations to be met, and <laughs> we want to make sure that they are know we are serious about the rail component. And f the one question that I have for you is the status of the bus maintenance facility. The bus maintenance facility, there are four sites under consideration now, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and you know, one of them has been rejected by the, one of them was in the airport area and the property owned by Atlanta, I think, uh, Atlanta Health, it's owned for Atlanta property. So they weren't interested in it. The, what we're trying to do is f locate a facility that is convenient to the buses, potential rail, and uh, uh, the other thing that that we have been pushing for is that any facility built that we work with the state's vocational education system and include a diesel maintenance uh, training program in that facility. I think it would help Marta, it would help us down here. Those are, those are good paying jobs and we have trouble getting mechanics. And I agree 100% with that. Also you said something about that you were looking at some property they were. They got, Atlanta. Full, Atlanta. they got full properties, and I think it was done in a presentation uh, earlier uh, that I, I saw out here somewhere. Uh, yeah, let, let me ask this that's, too. That's what they're talking about. Uh, okay, I know, I know we want the bus maintenance facility. Yes, ma'am. Let's add rail on that too. They've well, already rail that's that's what conversation. I'm saying. It is, to include it is, rail. We need all three. Mm -hmm. It needs to be accessible to all three. And, and you know, even though we don't have rail. We and rail needs to be phased in as we can afford yeah. it. Don't wait forever mm -hmm. till we're all gone before yeah. we do it all. Yeah, yeah, to, to his point, phasing in that you were talking about from East Point to uh, Mountain View area, but eventually it needs to go all the way down to Lovejoy. Yes. And we can talk about this all day, but uh, Commissioner yes, has a couple of questions she want to get I don't have any questions, sir. I just want to say thank you. And I want to say that I actually attended the last two board, MARTA board meetings and um, Madam Commissioner, that was conveyed at that time about making sure that we have the rail coming to Clayton County. The other thing I want to urge us to do is we have so many sidebar conversations. I'm looking at a date right now, Tuesday, October 30th, for the Clayton County Transit Initiative. And um, we part-time commissioners, and I try my best to get to all of these meetings. 
And I see, yes, I'm gonna call your name, Mr. Ricky Clark in the back, along with him and uh, several other um, folks from our, uh, our various jurisdictions. We took time out of our day last week, last week, to be able to sit down and to identify several points of interest for the rail, as well as the cost of phasing it in. If we all just respond to the emails and show up to some of these meetings, then we'll have the answers to some of the questions and we don't have to keep having so many conversations where nobody really knows the real truth. Um, I just really would like us to work together on this and stop fighting against MARTA and understand that we voted to be a part of MARTA. And that's all I got to say. Mr. That's Chairman, pretty much Mr. it. Mr. Griffin, Commissioner, let me thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. And let me also say that I'm willing to come most any Tuesday night. To you you want me for uh, an update or or whatever? And if you I, need and I appreciate that. Yes, thanks. Because we may know, we may attend the meetings, but I would like for the public to know what's this going on. Because I get questions a lot about mod and the rails and whatever. So I would like the public and on the TV I'd be glad to. at all. I'd be glad to. Thank and I you. Know, I know Ms. Slump uh, would too. Uh, just, just one last thought, and you may or may not know this. I asked you earlier before the meeting started if you had the opportunity to, to watch the, 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 the video from our last commission meeting or not. And, uh, and, and so there was a discussion on an opportunity for Clayton County to have an airport district per the 1965 RTCAA, you know, legal talked about, it, Jack talked about it, and there's, a, there's an item on tonight's agenda, a resolution okay. to create an airport tax district, and it, it, presumably if that were to pass, I would ask this board to, you know, give consent that, you know, help get your head around that and advocate for us and, and, and be in, in an intermediary as we attempt to negotiate an intergovernmental agreement with MARTA. That would make sense for the community. I'm not familiar with it, but if, if it involves MARTA and Clayton County, let me assure you that, uh, uh, that uh, Ms. Abdul Salam and I will be watching. I'm chairman of the planning committee and have been for two years, and, and that puts me in a place to kind of ride herd, particularly on where we are now with the planning. And uh, I have expressed concern from time to time that why does it take so long? And, and because we've always done it that way, well, that's not good enough. And, and I think the entire board, we've got uh, several new members of the board that have experience in construction and contracting. Uh, there are several issues that we're working on, but I, I am, do feel that our new uh, CEO is moving forward. There's been some other staff changes down at uh, MARTA. And, and I think all of it's for the best. And, 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 and again, don't hesitate to give us a holler. And uh, anytime you want to talk to me, I'll talk to you here. Uh, Probably yes, uh, thank uh, again, you, thank you for your presentation or the discussion, and please not only get in touch with us uh, during the meetings, but individually or as anything comes up, but make sure that you share all the information with all the board members. I want to thank members. all of you that participating. I think uh, some of us learned a lot on some of our travels, and uh, you know, and uh, some exciting things. Transit is important. <laughs> you know, when I went on the MARTA board, nobody wanted to talk about transit. Uh, thank you, Mr. Griffin. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, listen, listen. Uh, thank you. Um, in reference to that, the next stakeholder and technical advisory committee is a charrette, uh, which is Clayton County Transit Initiative, will be held on Tuesday, October 30th, 2018, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the City of East Point Annex, 3121 Norman Berry Drive in East Point. If you can make it, your voice does matter. Your input does matter. Please show up and let your voice be heard. Mr. Chair, the only other thing I do have to say is we have to remember, one of the things that I've learned in my two years is when you're talking about transit, you're not just looking at your local dollars. You have to be able to compete for federal dollars as well. And the way that you're going to be able to compete for federal dollars is through making sure that you have the proper zoning in place and that the zoning is cohesive with the zoning in your various cities as well. Remember, when you're talking about transit, it's not just traveling through unincorporated Clayton County, which is the parts that's not in the cities. It's traveling in the cities as well. So one of the things that was identified during the actual meeting where many of the city and county stakeholders, including mayors, were there participating, um, we realize that we've got some work to do in that arena. 
Um, so I do urge us to make sure that we continue once again to work collectively as uh, various jurisdictions because we're not going to be able to do it just on our dollar. You're ne we're not going to be able to do it. We've got to compete for the federal dollar, and we're competing not just against others in Clayton County. We could talk, I mean, others in Georgia. We can talk about Atlanta, but you're talking about competing with L.A., Seattle. You're competing with everyone to get those federal dollars. So let's position ourselves, let's work together, and let's make it work. Madam Clerk. Next is a presentation on the final drafts of master plans for Mountain View and Old Dixie, Terra Boulevard, as presented by their development authority. Mr. Ricky Clark. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the Clayton County Commission. It is an honor to stand before you and present to you all of the work that has went into creating this master plan for the Mountain View area. I would be remiss if I did not touch on MARTA for just a moment because it is a big economic development driver for our community and it's something that we will not just sit back and wait for it to happen, but we will in fact advocate that the taxation that our residents and constituents of Clayton County approve that as a county and speaking for all of the different jurisdictions that we indeed advocate for the importance of transit and realize the importance of the rail system and how it directly affects economic development. To speak directly to the conversation of Commissioner Franklin Warner, Marta had a meeting going last week of which there were four city managers in the room and collectively we have all agreed that in order to stand out amongst other jurisdictions around the United States, we are unified to collectively come up with an overlay district that speaks to how we wish to see transit operated within Clayton County. At the end of the day, as all of you well know, our constituents do not realize jurisdictional boundaries. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, they think that they're in Jonesboro, but they're not actually in the city of Jonesboro. They're in unincorporated Clayton County. But as branded by all of you, we believe that we are one Clayton with one voice. And if Marta is in our future, then we all must collectively come on one accord and push forth an initiative to let Marta know, even with the passage of this 15th Amendment, that we will not settle for nothing less than what our residents spoke on many years ago. And so as the new chairman of the Development Authority, I encourage you, um, as we'll seek to speak to all of you as we move forward with this initiative, um, to say that we want to see transit happen in our county. We've waited long enough. We're too close to the city and we're excited to combine forces, get feedback as to how we can move <coughs> forth this initiative in the spirit of collaboration and transparency to see transit happen in our community once and forever as it pertains to rail. But tonight, the purpose of the presentation is to showcase for you all of the hard work that has went into the, ma the master planning for what was once the eighth city in Clayton County, Mountain View. Uh, we've worked with the Sizemore group to come up with this plan. And if I was to provide for you some analytics, there are about 300 acres over in Mountain View here in Clayton County, half of which is undeveloped. So the beauty of this plan is that we know that there are potential property owners, et cetera, that have questioned the different plans, overviews, visions for Mountain View. And what Sizemore is here to do for you tonight is to provide to you a presentation that articulates from an analytical standpoint what people outside of Clayton County, researchers, analytics, et cetera, have said is the best use for the area. And we marry <coughs> that to the conversations held at different public meetings, hearing from the constituents of Clayton County as to the best usage of this property. We are proud of this endeavor, this master planning, the presentation that you are about to see, and the reason that we did not, as a development authority, approve the plan is because we wanted to ensure that before that plan was officially adopted, that we could indeed hear from all of the commission districts um, as to um, what is the best and highest, the highest and best use 
for that particular property. So what you're about to see is a culmination of different functionality um, in close proximity to the world's greatest airport, the airport that many of us can travel to from one of our main thoroughfares in Clayton County within 10 to 15 minutes and get to anywhere we want to travel in the world. So we feel that this is a great opportunity for us as a county to really move forward to enhance and preserve um, the acreage that is in our county. From a comparison standpoint, I'll call out to you the battery, the new battery operation that is over by the Cobb County, the new Bray Stadium. The Mountain View property is about four times in size as that of the battery. Initially, the, Clay the Cobb County Board of Commissioners took a bond out for this particular project. However, now they are paying back those bonds much faster than they had initially predicted, and they are indeed experiencing a $14 million surplus as provided within the Atlanta Business Chronicle for that operation over at the Battery. So we feel that with this property at Mountain View, a portion of our county that has been here for many, many years, that we have as much of an opportunity, if not more, than that experience and the economic driver that the battery has been for Clayton County. So I'll introduce to you our consultants for the, from the Sizemore Group in hopes that you will like the plan, but feel free, the, the plan is fluid. We would love to have input from all of the commissioners, especially the district commissioner, um, as to the presentation that you are about to see. Um, so, Mr. Deanna will do the presentation, um, and we're happy, and we ask that you welcome them, and we'll ask them to keep the presentation at a minimum to between 10 to 15 minutes so that you have ample time for what I think I think you already did the presentation, <laughs> Mr. Clark. <laughs> well, 30 minutes for you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> so let's try to keep it to 10 minutes. Come on. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for having us tonight. We are very excited to share with you what we've been working so closely with the Development Authority on. Um, as Ricky said, we really looked closely at the Mountain View area, but additionally, we looked at not only that international gateway to Clayton County, but also the gateway at Old Dixie and Terra Boulevard, a really important corridor gateway into the area. And so we have both sites that we'll present some information on to you on the direction we're heading in terms of a vision. As you can see on this first slide as well, the green lines are the Aerotropolis Greenway Trail Plan, an important connection that connects around the airport loop down the Flint River and really becomes a connection between these two gateways into Clayton County and a potential amenity and recreation facility to really build from. So the Mountain View area, um, the total area we looked at is about 750 acres. Um, we really zoomed in a little bit closer on that. Thank you. I'm having a little technical difficulties here. Uh, the focus. The focus area is about uh, just under 500 acres that we looked at, really zooming in on the Conley Road connection to Grant, uh, Charles W. Grant Parkway into the International Terminal. I don't think mine's working. There we go. Um, our vision for this area was really to create an international mixed-use district, bringing higher-paying jobs to the area, really building from MARTA plans and this transit-oriented development opportunity, um, and complementing the uses and the users of the adjacent airport. And I'm actually going to hand it over to Bill de St. Aubin to talk a little bit more about the vision for this area. and be quick um, but, but uh, it's a good transition uh, we talked about MARTA for the first uh, past 45 minutes and this plan is really predicated on MARTA coming in this is your first shot at having MARTA who controls the uh, yeah. control it yeah hey Bill can you put this a little closer to you yeah is this better yeah okay 
so is, so in this plan, uh, you have some natural assets. You got well, the natural asset is the stream buffer that c comes along that. Then you have two, you have some infrastructure assets that are 285, and then you have Conley Road that lines up straight with the international airport. So you're connected to the world, you're connected to MARTA. This is your uh, we think a great opportunity for Clayton County. You all recognize that. That's why you hired us. And you have to get this right because there is no big job center south of I-20 except for the, the airport. And this is the, this is the piece where Clayton overlaps that job center. So, so this is your chance for to get a really good high paying jobs in Clayton County. So we want to make sure it's done absolutely right to attract uh, as much of that as possible. So we, we did a market analysis. It wasn't just uh, Deanna and I were architects and planners, but um, we had a team of uh, transportation engineers and, and market folks, and they did an analysis of this whole area to see what could happen. And then we listened. We, we did listen to all the property owners, um, and we listened to a lot of different folks about what could happen, all the critical stakeholders. And there were some nice uh, surprises that came out of it. Um, but I want to start with, I think, is probably the, the most catalytic thing you could do, and, that's, and, and it ties right with the conversation we've been having, is to make sure you develop around the MARTA station a uh, first-class TOD. And, oh, that dot doesn't go on there, Mark. But you see where it says International Mixed-Use Office District? And we, we modeled that a little bit after Reston, Virginia, not far from the airport in uh, Washington, D.C., the one down <coughs> in the bottom corner. They have a high-density mixed-use uh, project that's close to the uh, close proximity to the airport. If you take the fact that you have the international access place, you also this would be the first stop in Clayton County for the for the transit. Uh, we carefully designed where that could happen and created so when you get off the train, you end up in a green space surrounded by uh, office buildings. The next that that's the dark blue color. The light. Uh, the next thing that was a surprise for us in our market analysis. <laughs> There's a hole in this area for regional, um, regional retail at a larger scale than a neighborhood center, uh, more of an outlet center, an upscale outlet center, and there's examples of that around the airport. So that's what the red use is, and we intentionally put that on 285 because it likes exposure to a lot of traffic. It, it may not be the real hot paying jobs. It will be jobs, but it will be a lot of tax revenue for the, for the county. <coughs> Um, coming from where it kindly goes into a residential neighborhood, we added another uh, residential mixed use, and all of this is mixed use, particularly along uh, Main Street, a new Main Street we created that's pedestrian friendly. And then up in the upper right hand corner, still along 285, we saw use for regional entertainment. We think there's a lot of interest to do something that would have both a global and a, and a, and a um, local, when I say it, a Atlanta region and <coughs> international attraction. And uh, that's a great piece of property to do it at. And if you, if you watch the, you know, how the economy is shifting, we're going to an experiential economy. So that's going to be a place where you can have some really cool experiences. And that's evolving rapidly, so we, we didn't get too specific on what could happen there. But, but we think that's a great site for it. And then, there, of course, there's a, there's a demand for, um, for industrial in this area. But I've, I've also consulted with College Park in the, in the past, and the mayor did not want industrial in the area over there. And uh, so, th and right now, industrial is looking for uh, good parcels. So we wanted to build on that, but build something that was better uh, suited for um, what you're trying to do, your highest and best use for this, this parcel. So what we uh, looked at is an advanced manufacturing, uh, which would, again, be uh, better paying jobs with, with mixed use and maker space. Actually, manufacturing has been growing in the U.S. at a per, uh, pretty rapid pace. And a lot of it is small uh, companies making really cool stuff uh, and using uh, robotics to do it. Uh, but, we, but to really stimulate that, you'll notice the purple. You have a little piece of parcel that has to be for transportation uh, use by some uh, deed restriction. So we, we were um, brainstorming what to do over there. And the best idea I, I heard and we ran with is that if this could become an educational a hub. It could be a piece of uh, Georgia Tech where they study aeronautics or another uh, university. And what I like about that right next to the advanced manufacturing, if you think about a few years back when we started turning the economy around in Georgia, it started with Baxter coming here, the, the, the billion dollar plant that was built out uh, 20. And as soon as they came here, they did a $20 million expansion to the educational facility uh, out there so they could train the people that they needed. So if you're trying to attract some advanced manufacturing here and you also have a site 
for the educational component to train the workers, it's really good. It works the other way as well. We've done several studies, we do a lot of higher education work, where the educational center becomes an incubator and companies grow out of that and they need space bigger than the educational space. And so you have a really good kind of relationship between those two that we want to build on. Next. And in, in doing so, we did a, a pedestrian grid because people want walkable environments. They don't want automotive environments anymore. Um, you know, you got to be able to get your car there and get your car out of there. But once you're there, you want to be able to park once and walk around. Uh, and so we've designed the whole thing along those lines. So it's, it's uh, pedestrian friendly. Next. And this is really, I'm going over some of the pieces I've already told you about. You can flip through this so we can get to your... TOD. And we did this kind of image where you could, not only you have MARTA coming in, this is the first stop, and this is inspirational. Right now, the market demand says you could probably build one of those office buildings. You're looking at four. So we're really putting this out there if there was a corporate relocation to kind of inspire them. Uh, over time, you could build out something like this. And, and I think when you get transit here and you'll be connected to the entire region, because uh, what it is true, what we're all looking for as employers is... Um, but what the MARTA gentleman said is we're looking for employees. So you got to have employees that can get to your place equally, easily, and, and MARTA provides that. But you also notice a monorail thing flying across that could connect this whole area and loop back to the international. We think that's important, and, and, um, and in partnering with the, internet, the uh, airport and the uh, development to come, I think something like that is, is realistic, and it, and it then makes you really an interconnected place. And if you look at major airports around the world, there's, there's uh, all kinds of connectivity like that right to the terminal. Do you all know how high those buildings can be? Yeah, they could be 20 stories. Cause it's, what's interesting is the grade drops down. The, the, the uh, planes take off at about 1,000 feet, and then the grade drops down. I think we're down to eight something in some of these. But, but also the planes go up, and you're, you're relatively, <laughs> the further you go, the taller you can get. But mm -hmm. as soon as we came to, like, the MARTA area, you're already able to do 20 stories. Okay. Yeah, which is nice. It's nice yeah. news to have. And so we have also developed, we think the best way to do this is a mountain view overlay district zoning. And so we, uh, the sooner you can get these uh, codes, there's an interesting timing going on to be direct about the... Um, you know, when Amazon announces where it's going to go, if it's not here, it might not be here, you know, <laughs> that there's going to be some pressure to redevelop this and uh, lift the moratorium. So we want to get something in place to make sure the right things happen. And then we have a, a short term. I'm not going to bore you with reading all these, but whenever we do a plan, we like to, we don't want you to lose momentum. Um, so the, we have a 100-day plan of things we're going to accomplish to keep this thing going in the right direction. Then we have a long-term plan, one to five-year plan. So there's a lot you can do in your actions you're taking right away, which I'm proud of to see how fast you all are moving. And, uh, but this, this gives you an outline. And spend some time looking at that and ask, ask us any questions you have about it. Next. And then Deanna looked at the uh, medical district. Okay, I got my mouse now, so I'll scroll down. So looking at the Terra Boulevard area, so to orient you, this is I-75 coming down to Terra Boulevard here. And then over this way is Old Dixie coming down and converging into Terra Boulevard with the Med Southern Regional Medical Center over here. Um, we really zoomed into that area, really looking at the intersection of Old Dixie and Terra Boulevard as that key, really, gateway into the site. The first thing people see when they are south of the airport, this is one of the first exits and one of the first real visions into Clayton County. So our vision for this area really built from the opportunities of the medical center and making sure that we are creating a medical district that expanded those office opportunities, medical office, but also a mixed use environment so that we can attract those office users with residential and retail. One of the biggest uh, opportunities here is really realigning the old Dixie Terra Boulevard intersection. Um, I'm sure you're very familiar with that intersection. It's a very convoluted intersection with several um, interchanges or intersections along the way and signals. 
So what we've done, the major move here is to cut Old Dixie off that's coming south here and turn it into Upper Riverdale. So it no longer connects down on this section of Old Dixie to Terra Boulevard. This creates less intersections here at this major node, uh, making traffic flow a lot smoother and making it more desirable for development. We then focused Old Dixie as our opportunity for really a livable, walkable environment. So this new portion of Old Dixie is cut off from that regional traffic so we can put restaurants and retail along it and green space. Our concept plan for this, as I mentioned, was really overall to create a medical district here, but we do identify areas that are most appropriate for some uses. Hotel being closest to the interchange and the interstate, retail closer to Terra Boulevard for visibility, and then housing set behind that to really complement the retail and restaurants that we'd like to attract. And the intermixing being office within that. Getting away from me. <laughs> I don't know why that's doing that. I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. Um, so to highlight some of the opportunities here, as I mentioned, we have this opportunity. This is the existing par uh, set of parcels that sit between Terra Boulevard and Old Dixie currently. There's a Waffle House there. There's um, a pawn shop, a title shop, those type of uses. That is the first thing people see when they get off the intersection. So what we're recommending is to look at the opportunity to really green that area and create a gateway park. Something that's really beautiful and appealing and will attract the development along that park. One of the main partners we're encouraging is similar to what we talked about at Mountain View is an educational partner um, with Clayton State University, less than four miles from this site. There's opportunity to bring medical satellite or their continuing education program here. It's a lot closer to the hospital, providing them better access, but also creates a catalytic development here to really draw the office appropriate. Our first phase here is highlighted. You can see we're really focusing in on that gateway park and the surrounding development, um, particularly bringing in the education. There is a demand for hotel in the area, so we'd encourage you to move forward with that as well. And here's a view of that um, looking north, um, Old Dixie being the road on the right and the road on the left is Terra Boulevard. Um, opportunities for restaurants on the park, maybe the Waffle House stays and has a rooftop instead. <laughs> Um, similarly, we're looking at an overlay district to really uh, create a character for this area. With all our overlays, not only are we recommending the land use edits, but also making sure there's design standards included. So what's this visual feel and style that you want for that area and really incorporating into that, not only with streetscapes, but with the architecture as well. Um, and we have a whole list of next steps to take on as well. Um, I'll point out in both of these, it really is making sure that the council, or I'm sorry, the commission is uh, in line with this plan, has provided us recommendations so that we're making sure everyone's on board to move it forward. Um, and so we're really appreciative of your time today, and we're open to any questions. Thank you for your presentation. Thank Are you. there any questions from the board? Thank you. Job well Thank done. Thank you. Thank you. The board will now hear a presentation on the Chamber's Small Business Development Committee's work on small business resources on the Chamber's website, as presented by Celiane De Young. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Good Chairman evening. Turner and Commissioners. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Warner, for allowing us this time to present um, the small business resources um, that was added to the Chamber website. Um, the purpose of this section of the website is to introduce one location uh, for all the resources that are available throughout Clayton County for small businesses, entrepreneurs, and anyone that's thinking of opening up a business. 
um, through, through the website, um, we divided the sections up into access and capital, um, applying for business licenses, uh, business growth, uh, educational resources, and several other options. And basically, um, anyone interested in finding additional information would click through each link to find um, the information they need. We did not reinvent the information that's on that link. Uh, on the website, we basically took all different links throughout the county and put them all in one resource. And that's what we have. All right, any questions <laughs> from the board? I just want to commend you all for the work that you've done because too often as business owners, um, they're always trying to figure out if it's county, if it's city, and where to go. So I like the fact that you did not reinvent the wheel, but you just pulled together the resources that were already available and put them in one centralized location. Yes. And so your team has worked really, really hard with the Chamber of Commerce, I mean the Clayton County Chamber, yeah, Chamber of Commerce, along with um, those in the community, including um, Georgia Power and several other folks. So thank you, Celine, and, and thank, thank you. you also to uh, my other fellow Rotarian over there. And if anyone's interested in getting additional information, um, go to the Clayton County Chamber website um, and click on the business resources link. Thanks, Judith. Thank you so much. Madam Clerk. Mr. Chairman, the board will now consider the consent agenda. Okay, before I ask for a motion for, to approve the consent agenda, I just wanna make a quick announcement that if you are here to hear the public hearing for the Anvil Block rezoning request, that is not on tonight's agenda. The Anvil Block rezoning request petition is not on tonight's agenda. The petitioner pulled it back. They asked to pull it, so it's done. All right, I intend a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Chuck Reed, legal department. Ms. Reed, before you start, just give the audience, uh, we'd love for you to stay, but if you are going to leave, we'll give you a couple of minutes to leave so you won't be disruptive. <clears throat> we need to pull. I think I'll take them separately. We'll take them separately. Students, do they need to get their things signed? I hate going to leave because they got to What are they here for? They, for their classes. They want to get the yeah. yeah. As, as Mr. Clayton State students, do y'all need to get signatures from board members for anything for your class? No? Okay. All right. All right. All right. They Usually they get them signed. Y'all have a great evening. <laughs> You're looking like you're not sure back there. <laughs> I hope the professor believes Take care of that. Take care of that, Chief. Take care of that. Chief can sign it. Yeah. All right, Mr. Reed, unless the board members, any board members want to take one separately, just take them all together. Hearing, hearing okay. none separate, take them together. Uh, all right, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the first is uh, ordinance. I'm sorry, hold on just a second for me. The first is Ordinance 2018-97, which is an ordinance to amend the Clayton County Zoning, zoning Ordinance, specifically Appendix A, Zoning, Article 1, Basic Provisions, Section 1.5, Defined Words, so as to delete the definition for the term Zoning Administrator and insert in lieu thereof a new definition to amend the Clayton County Subdivision Ordinance, specifically Chapter 86, Subdivision Ordinance, Article 3, Subdivision Regulations, Division 1, Subdivision Ordinance, Section 86-86, Defined Words, 
so as to delete the definition for the term zoning administrator and insert in lieu thereof a new definition to provide an effective date of this ordinance, to provide for repealing of conflicting ordinances, to provide for codification, to provide for severability, and for other purposes. Uh, next is uh, Resolution 2018-107, which is a resolution to amend the classification specification for the position of director of the Clayton County Department of Community Development, to provide a source of funding for a salary increase for the position, to authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget where necessary to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expense, to provide an effective date of this resolution for other purposes. The next is Resolution 2018-108, which is a resolution by the Clayton County Board of Commissioners adopting and appointing members of the Clayton County Board of Ethics to provide an effective date of this resolution for other purposes. The next is Resolution 2018-109, which is a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of Clayton County, Georgia, to create a special service district to be known as the Clayton County Atlanta Airport Public Transportation District to authorize a levy of a retail sales and use tax, to authorize the county and its departments to perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of this resolution, to authorize the chairman and his designee, the chief operating officer and the county attorney to perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of this resolution, to authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget where necessary to reflect the appropriate revenue source and expense to provide an effective date of this resolution for other purposes. Okay, is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. Any questions on any of the items? Just on 12. Commissioner Mr. Warner. Mr. Chair, uh, why would we not have taken those, the uh, resolution uh, to reconfigure the department separate from increasing the salary? Isn't that something normally that would come from HR? I mean, I'm, I've only been here, I don't know. Didn't they do that before? The, there isn't a resolution to reconfigure. The first resolution merely is a if you're talking about resolution 2018 106 106 and 107 that, uh, I'm correct. sorry 2018 that's basically amending the uh, code to um, allow the community development director to have the duties of the zoning administrator I got a question with that when they were all together before, when all the department, when zoning administration was underneath community development and we separated it out, did we decrease the pay of the director at that time? That, uh, From my so, understanding, he wasn't getting paid for that position. <clears throat> Chairman and the board, uh, the substantive difference is with this particular position, the zoning administrator was being compensated. The board, the actual uh, community development director was not being compensated for the work of the zoning administrator because by code, the zoning administrator carried on that function, whereas this is making that change. So, but he's still going to appoint somebody to carry, according to what I read, he can uh, designate someone to, or the person can designate someone to carry out the function. So it, essentially, um, I hear it, but to me, I'm not really seeing the difference in the two, and that's just me. The, the difference would be statutorily he'll be responsible for it, even if he designate that function to somebody else. That's the difference. And it would be no different, correct me if I'm wrong, than if we added, I don't know, some other department to, like, under the police department, then because the chief would be res ultimately responsible and have to oversee that department, that's where the compensation yeah. comes in. That is correct. But I go back again, if that's the case, then the argument is when you had the police chief that you separated out from 911, you didn't decrease that pay from the police chief. So for me, I just, I should have taken it early, but um, these are just the two, right? So I can vote, that's fine. I just wanna make that statement. I hear what you all are saying, but for me, it doesn't satisfy um, I guess what I need to be able to support such a 10% increase. I don't think that what we're providing is substantive enough considering the um, previous actions of this board and of the county. So that's just my take on it. Any other questions? I don't have a question, but I do have a, a, a suggestion or a recommendation. If we will please um, give our model board representatives a copy of resolution 109, 2018-109. Duly noted. I have a question about 109. The money that's collected from that special district stays within that district. That's correct. In a separate account. 
No, well, it's part of it's part of the uh, MARTA's fund, but they, it can only be used for uh, transportation projects that touch that district. So who collects the money? MARTA does. So the money we stays in that benefit. district and only be used for transportation projects within that district. First of all, Mr. Chairman, excuse me. Uh, you're not authorizing right. the money yet. All we're doing is starting the process right. to create the district. Okay. And then the negotiations will take place with MARTA for a contract, just what the code section says. The, the, you were, you're partially right in your statement, and that is that, the, that any project has to start or has to touch the district and would be used in the district, but, but it can be used on any, any project that touches the district. Uh, the money is not limited to just to just being used within the district. It just has to touch the district. So all this resolution is doing is just saying that we're going to take the next step and, and negotiating further. Right. That's all it's doing. Create the district. And then That's once the money part of the negotiations are done, you have to come back to the forward. Yes, sir. Yeah. You would approve any agreement. You'd approve the use of it. You'd approve the, the, the establishment of the tax, the whole nine yards. We're just starting the ball rolling. Gotcha. Any other questions? And it does specifically say that in this resolution, too. All right, here now. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. We need a an executive session on real estate and litigation, please. I'm sorry, that was real estate and litigation. What personnel? We don't have personnel. And that hand don't talk about. Well, let's just say not anyway, personnel as I'm aware of. I have a question. No, personnel. So you got on personnel. personnel. Okay, and so personnel. And personnel. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the next six items are zoning public hearings. If the board does not have any objections, we will take items 15 and 16 together. The applicant for both is Sharon McLean, and the request on the first uh, petition is for a comprehensive plan land use map amendment. And for the second, the request is for a rezoning. This is to develop six single family residential lots. The subject property is located on Mitchell Road. For the first petition, the planning and zoning staff and Zach recommend approval. For the second, the planning and zoning staff and Zach recommend approval with conditions. This is Commission District 1, Commissioner Sona Gregory's district. Okay, is Sharon McLean here? Yes, and this uh, property is frontage along Mitchell Road. Are you Ms. McClain? Please come forward. Hi, uh, commissioners. Uh, I'm not Sharon sure McClain. I'm Gloria Reeves. I'm one of the co-owners of the land that we're speaking of. It's four of us that are the uh, owners of the land, Sharon McClain, uh, Tasha Finney, and Deshaun McClain. And our interest is to, um, the, the, we have, it's four acres of land that we purchased about um, 20 years ago, as just as a family, as an investment. And we've, um, we, you know, paid for the land around maybe around 2011. And at this point, we want to just get the land um, divided into lots. It's currently agricultural, and we're requesting that it be rezoned to residential RS 180, so that we could, at some point or another, either build um, build a state homes uh, for a state homes on that lot. So. Okay. Is anybody here speak? <laughs> against or for this request, come on forward, ma'am. Hi, my name is Lisa Goodman Bowler and I reside at 4736 Boulder Crest, which is directly in back of the property. which is um, directly in back. Um, she mentioned 20 years ago she bought the property. We bought the property about 24 years ago. And we have our home on the property. At this point, from when we bought the property from the horse farm down on Bouldercrest, 
Um, there is probably, <coughs> I don't know, 11 acres or so. No, at the point that we purchased it, every home had to be at least an acre. So no one could build on the property for um, less than an acre. Some people have two acres. My neighbor next to me, his home is on two acres. On the other side, it's one and a half. We're about one and 1.4 um, acres that our house sit on. For um, the four acres, I'm asking that you continue to allow um, an acre to be one home per acre because um, at the way that the land is, if you put six homes there, they will dead end to my property. And that's not, um, the ordinance was already there when we purchased it. And so everybody else who have built on that lot have adhered to it. And so we're asking you to um, just uphold the um, property guidelines that was there and that each home would be more than an acre. Thank you, And so that's what um, we're asking. Sir, do you have some? Sir. Good afternoon. My name is Roberto Bolum. Uh, that's my wife there. Um, she just mentioned that she's planning on putting four houses, and I'm okay with that. Um, initially, she said that she was going to look at putting a subdivision that would be six or more um, per, you know, that four acres, and I'm against anything other than four uh, houses in there. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Anybody else like to speak? I would. Come on, Ms. Garber. Mickey Garber, Unincorporated Rex, Georgia. Miss Singleton, this property is in your district, yes or no? Gregory, yes, Miss Singleton, is. Gregory? It is. it is. Let me say, the, the people who live there now have to protect their property values. I suggest in order to uphold those people's property values, you upgrade the residential requirements. Doesn't necessarily have to be on the one acre of land that you're asking for, but build a better home so that when these people <laughs> sell their homes, they are, are gathered the information of what they're buying. You can buy a wonderful home, and it doesn't bring down the value of the people who've lived there for 20 years. Are you following what I'm trying to say? Sir, I'm hearing you. You're hearing me, but are you understanding? Sir, we're not going to be, go be argumentative. Okay? No, sir, we're, we're not, not going to be argumentative. We're not going to be argumentative. She answered the question. So I've said what I need to say. Thank, Thank you, sir. All right, anybody else like to speak for or against? Commissioner Gregory. Ms. Spann, just for the record so the public would know, would you address the issue that um, the neighbors raised about requiring an acre per house and that type? Yes, the applicant has adjusted their request to reflect uh, four uh, lots to be allowed on the, on the total of four acres. The original request, of course, came in for six lots to be accomplished on the four acres, which necessitated the rezoning because the uh, lot size will, felt, will fall will have fallen below one acre in size. S the, uh, now that the applicant has changed the request to, to four individual lots on four acres, that would give her at the four lots at one acre minimum. The uh, rezoning, the district that under RS 180 would actually allow a smaller lot, but staff has added conditions to, to limit the, the development of the property to not more than four lots at a minimum of one acre in size. Okay. And Mr. Chair, with that, I offer a motion to approve this petition with the conditions as set forth um, by Zagwell. Is there a second? Second. 
Any other questions? Okay. Commissioner Edmondson. I have just a technical question. I fully support the commissioner's recommendation, but why wouldn't it be zoned a state residential uh, a state? Well, right. with all due respect, we don't want to do it by condition. Uh, we don't. We, if you're going to rezone it 180, we can't change the size of the lot by special mm. stipulations or special by special conditions uh, because there is not a constitution letter filed you have to either grant it or deny it unless the applicant will agree to a state residential which would get you the one lot and then you could do it at a state residential which on a one lot one acre per lot would be the way to accomplish that if they will agree to that <coughs> Ms. Ms. McLean. Yeah, Ms. Spain, would you? Yes, that would require the applicant to to have to come back with a new application no. or we can down. We can no, no, they can agree the request to allow them to, okay. to uh, or they can verbally challenge the constitutionality of the ordinance as agricultural, which would free the board up to zone it to any constitutional classification. Do it either way. Th that's fine. Staff's objective is to maintain the one acre minimum on this property, so what the zoning is recommended is RE would provide for that, so staff is satisfied with the, with the okay. four, right. four lots. But we need Ms. McLean to give her verbal. Ms. McLean, could you take the, the podium? Okay. You heard everything that was discussed. Do you have any issue with what is being proposed? Well, I need to have a better understanding of what it is they're saying, first of all, because I'm not a builder, I'm not an engineer, and I would like to have a better understanding uh, as it relates to the type of homes that we mentioned. We, we started this with a couple of public meetings a few times. We initially started, again, with the request for six um, <coughs> houses per acre, which we know that Clayton County standards allow for that amount of uh, land to be up to 12 houses. We weren't interested in trying to be a 12 houses, or so we came in with six, but then the zoning board um, asked us to consider going from six to four, and we agreed that going from six to four houses on four acres, which is one house per acre. Um, the, from my understanding, the Clayton County standards for a subdivision is if you put more than two houses, it's considered a subdivision, but that's not necessarily what, you know, our, that's, that's Clayton County's uh, rules and regulations. Um, as it relates to uh, what they're asking me to agree to, I don't, could somebody elaborate on to me what that is? Would you like to defer this until the next zoning here? And it's no, 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 she, she said she agreed agree to it. Just, 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 just agree. explain it, yeah, just explain it. It's the same thing she just said. I just said. need to yeah, get a better yeah. understanding of what it is. That Okay. I'll explain. The, I don't want to agree and I don't understand. The, your application was for RS-180 to support the six lots. Now that the recommendation is and you're, and you're proposing four lots, the RE district, residential estate district, would support the one-acre lots. So the board of commissioners are, are su is suggesting that the property be rezoned to RE instead of the RS-180 that you required. So the zoning of RE would allow you to do one house <coughs> per acre. Okay, well, I, I mean, I agree that that's what the zoning board had requested for approval before we had, we had, we had wiped off the table for our understanding the, the six houses. We we're so interested I in four. I want to make sure that you have yeah. a clear understanding. We understand that it was one house per acre. Um, with a, We actually had another condition of a 15-foot um, setback, side setback. So we, had, we understood some of the things that were agreed to and that we talked about at the other um, meeting and we also agreed that the homes would be homes that would appreciate the value of the community not depreciate the value of the community homes with at least two hundred fifty thousand to three hundred thousand dollar homes and i also live in that same district i live in rex georgia myself um, so i don't live very far from where this property is uh, but that land that we're speaking of is about a couple of miles away from where i live but we certainly would not want to put anything there that's going to depreciate the value of the homes and the homes in that community, they value differently already because the homes on the north side of the street are different than the homes on the north side, on the south side of the road. So we plan to stay in comport with the homes on the side of the street that our land is on. Okay, Ms. Spann, I know we've got the motion on the floor. I just want to make sure with those conditions, were there anything else besides the 15 foot setback that Zach required? Um, yes, there are three recommendations from staff. The, the first recommendation is, to, is for the four is for the uh, one acre per one lot per acre. The uh, second is that the uh, the difference that the front elevations be different from the adjacent from the adjacent property so that they maintain different 
frontages and that the uh, front facade be 80% uh, brick and stone and stucco and no vinyl siding was okay. recommended for, uh, for building materials. Okay. Were my motion said with those conditions as set forth? Mm -hmm. So we're fine with that. The one, and then one additional condition, Mr. the added condition <laughs> for the planning commission. Yeah. Yeah. What I'd like for you to do is to amend your motion to rezone it to a state residential. Mm -hmm. Let okay. that amendment get approved sure. and then with her consent. Okay. With those other conditions. All right, I, I amend my motion to um, approve it as a state residential. With yeah, all second. The second. Any other questions? Hearing none. Uh, those in favor, aye. All right. Aye. And opposed. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. The next two zoning public hearings, uh, the applicant is Theo Stone. The, for the first petition, the request is for a comprehensive plan land use map amendment. And the second petition is uh, for a rezoning. This is for the construction of a Crystal's restaurant. The property is located at 7930 Terra Boulevard, Jonesboro, Georgia. Planning and zoning staff for both recommends approval. Zach recommends denial for both. This is Commission District 4, Vice Chairman Edmondson's District. Mr. Stone. Mr. Chairman. Before he comes up and presents, can you ask if there's anyone opposed? Is there anybody here who's going to be opposed to this request? None, Kelly. Yes. Okay, I hear none then. Uh, Mr. Evans. If, if you will, if you will uh, entertain me for one second. Sure. Um, Ms. Spann, I have a question. In the packet, there's a comment under... Um, I guess comments. It says the Clayton Forward has identified 138 near its intersection. What is Clayton Forward? The, the uh, land use plan. The Clayton County land use plan is. is That's what we named it, the Clayton Forward? Okay, thank you. Um, this is a current brownfield that can be remediated. Is that right? It's environmentally cleared already. It already is? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve. I'll second that motion. Are there any questions? Those in favor? Oh, oh, right. oh we've got to have it here. We've got to have it here. So, a chance to speak. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Let me step back. Let me step back. Oh, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there anybody here to speak for or against this request? I would like to. Come forward, Mr. Garber. Mickey Garber, unincorporated Rex, Georgia. Uh, I would like to say that I am not speaking neither for or against his restaurant but I would like for his restaurant to exercise cleanliness and I not have to pick up crystal bags coming from his store, that I suggest that his bags that he sells be numbered in a way that identifies how the material comes from his store so that a levy can be put against him for collecting his trash off the road that he sold to customers. And I would also like for his bags to say on them, welcome to Crystals, but please don't litter. Thank you. All right, thank you. Come forward. Drew Andrews, unincorporated uh, Jonesboro. Um, this is the first I'm hearing about that, and that's my problem. But um, I'm not for or against, but I just want to make mention, we have a lot of fast food restaurants yes. 
in our community, and I live along Terrible Boulevard, and Crystal's is one of my favorites, but we have too many. And if we do approve this, I like moving forward that we have a ratio for every, for lack of a, I'm not gonna say bad food, but for every fast food restaurant, mm -hmm. there's one good, healthy restaurant, Whole Food, Panero Bread, something, you know? So moving forward, if we can take that in, in consideration. Thank you. Thank you. I'll speak to that. Mr. Andrews, I'll speak to that a little bit. This is, uh, and I didn't mean to, to, to not allow a, a presentation. I just didn't think anyone would look close enough to care. But uh, there is an overlay standard that was put in place about 10 years ago over that area. Um, and that, that overlay standard has been revised more than once since then to, to get the aesthetics and the highest and best use and, and community input for what it couldn't, couldn't be. And I have long advocated for higher paying jobs and I absolutely do not think that fast food restaurants pay any kind of livable wage whatsoever of any brand regardless of how good or bad their food is um, and not vilifying the applicant but uh, for me personally probably the single largest uh, uh, rationale for my support of this is what it's displacing what might be what I think the the biggest eyesore one of the biggest eyesores in the county is that derelict gas station that has sat there for at least 15 if not 20 years and uh, um, I've gone as far as looking for things like grants just to tear it down for the sake of tearing it down so I hope the, the, the restaurant is the most successful restaurant I hope you pay a livable wage more than you have to I hope you meet all of the overlay standards I do think we could have healthier food um, and thank you for tearing down what you're about to tear down and I, and I can agree with that those comments definitely it's been there for a while all right uh, your motion. Uh, is there anybody else? Anybody else? All right, Mr. Emerson. Motion to approve. And again, I'll second the motion. Uh, any questions, statements? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. It's 4 1, it passes. The next zone in public hearing, the applicant is Nick Sanfilippo, and the request is for a conditional use permit to construct a Planet Fitness Health Club in the existing parking lot area of the Freeway Junction Shopping Center. The subject property is located at 3797 Highway 138, Stockbridge, Georgia. The Planning and Zoning staff recommends approval with conditions. ZAG recommends approval. This is District 1, Commissioner Gregory's district. Mr. San Filippo. Actually, uh, I'm Cody Johnson with uh, Franklin Street representing Planet Fitness. Nick didn't make it. Okay, well, I'm good with that because I can pronounce Johnson. So, yes. <laughs> so please proceed. Um, so uh, this is this is Mike with Planet Fitness, Director of Operations. How you doing, Board? Uh, my name is uh, Mike Grimshaw. I'm Director of Operations for Planet Fitness here in the uh, the Atlanta market, and just want to thank you for considering us to come to. Uh, the Stockbridge location, and I'm here to answer any questions on behalf of our company. Tell us a little something about your company. So, mm -hmm. how you doing? Chairman Turner met you uh, not too long ago. Yes. Um, so we are a franchise of Planet Fitness that uh, that started um, down here in um, the Atlanta market uh, in 2011. We have uh, opened up uh, 17 locations just recently. Last uh, two weeks ago, we opened up a club at the West End Mall. We have another club uh, that is opening next Friday, uh, the 26th of October. Uh, in Union City. Um, we are as far north as Milton, Georgia, uh, as far east as Conyers, and as far south right now as McDonough. And we have a development team that is constantly studying our internal data um, to understand uh, the mem mem membership penetration. And we, um, with, with the locations that we have both east, west, and north of Stockbridge, uh, we've identified a gap of an underserved market potential and based on the current club locations against the overall population density, um, consider Stockbridge a, uh, a development site. So I know um, one of my coworkers, my partner colleague, has been here a few times to present to the board, and I'm here to answer any questions. We, in 11 years, we have uh, 325 employees now in our group. Um, started off at Wesley Chapel over in Decatur, and um, you know, we're trying to con continue to grow. So. And you have a center over here in Jonesboro. 
Yes, sir. Yes, on uh, Tower Boulevard. That was our uh, fifth, uh, fourth, fifth location over in Tower Boulevard. Uh, we also have one on a little triangle down here. We have one on Riverdale and Highway 85, as well as one in Fayetteville and Banks Crossing. How's the attendance at the Jonesboro store? It's very strong. It's going up great. We've got uh, 15 employees, um, you know, given a career opportunity. Uh, Michael, you mentioned some of the paying jobs. We do go ahead and, um, you know, I've started a pretty extensive training program allocating uh, 50 hours of training. We do a 10, uh, 10 day, five hour day training for all our new employees to come in so that they have a better opportunity for success and to grow with our company. Um, recently have um, two director uh, level um, uh, regional directors. We have four regional managers, um, 18, uh, 17 actually managers of club right now, assistant managers. Um, so really uh, we've had two head trainers um, two facilities, so obviously in, in eight years, no playbook on how to go ahead and do it, but um, we are going ahead and, and learning from our mistakes and trying not to make the mistake, same mistake twice and um, really have, you know, a lot of communities and stuff like that, as well as Clayton County, have welcomed us into the area and stuff like that, providing not only opportunities, but a, a comfortable judgment-free zone to create a, a non-intimidating workout environment for our members to come in and live a happier, healthier lifestyle. So. Um, so far, so good, and we're just looking to continue to grow, and we'd love your support to come to, South, um, to Stockbridge. Board members, have any questions? I have a question. question. Do y'all actually offer a discount to Clayton County employees? With approval, it's free, yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Write that down. With approval. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? Some, some got it. <laughs> okay, are there any questions? Uh, anybody here to speak up for or against this request? Anybody speak for or against this request? <laughs> all right, Commissioner Gregory. Okay, maybe we all just didn't speak up because maybe we need to go, right? But, uh, uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve this petition. Um, Madeline, sorry, were, were there any conditions? Did Zag ask for any questions? No, there were no, no accompanying conditions from all the... Right. Uh, from the sure. Um, Mr. From uh, the Zag committee, but the staff just made one routine condition, and that's that they meet all development standards gotcha. in the code okay. related to building and fire. And with that, Mr. Chair, I'll offer a motion that we approve this petition. Is there a second? Second. Any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Oppose. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. And the final zone and public hearing for this evening. The applicant is Pastor Pamela Watson, and the request is for a conditional use permit for a place of worship. The subject property is located at 5620 Old Dixie Road, Forest Park. The planning and zoning staff recommends approval with conditions. ZAG recommends approval. This is District 2, Commissioner Hambrick's district. The applicant can come forward. Good evening, Mr. Chairman Good evening. and the Board of Commissioners. My name is Pastor Pamela Watson, and this is Bishop D.C. Watson. We're with Better Day, re representing Better Day Life Ministry, located 5620 Old Dixie Highway in Forest Park, Georgia. And we are here today requesting a conditional use permit for a place of worship, religious facility, we would like to say that we Better Day Life Ministries have been in Clayton County uh, since 2011 and uh, doing service in the area. As a result of that, we have seen the very first year of our service, we have seen many homeless individuals that lived in extended stays uh, now renting and on homes in Clayton County. Many of them who once walked everywhere rode bicycles everywhere, are now driving, have driver's license. Some who held lower positions are now managers in the area. And we'd like to also say, finally, that um, the property uh, was previously uh, 
occupied by two other churches, and it was gifted to our church in 2015. And lastly, um, the bishop and I are homeowners in Clayton County for over 38 years. And as a registered nurse and a case manager, I feel that, and a postal clerk, uh, we feel that we know the community and we are able to meet some of the needs of the Clayton County uh, citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody here to speak for or against this petition? Come forward, please, sir. If y'all can just step to the side for a second. How you doing? My name is uh, Deacon Christopher. Speaking to the microphone. My name is Deacon Christopher Watson. Um, I go to the church. This is also my mom. Um, I can say, yeah, I'm 37. They lived in Clayton County for 38 years. I've lived in Clayton County all my life. There are some pretty good people. They want to help out the community. Um, they are right. There are people that was like in um, worse situations that became better. Um, their whole outgo, their whole goal is to make you know people have better lives. That's what better day means. Um, they have worked with me. I've become, become I've become successful. Um, you know, I've lived in the community, Glen County, all my life. Um, never been arrested. Been married 18 years. So you know, they have something going that can help out people and make them into better people. Through God, and I know this is what they're trying to do, so I came here to support them. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Anybody else like to speak up for or against this petition? <coughs> Commissioner Hamburg. Yes, this is for a church, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I've been to the property, mm -hmm. couldn't turn around, pulled in, couldn't get out. I don't think, I'm trying to see if there's a sidewalk. I mean, it's right on the road. And I'm, I mean, this property is too small for a place of assembly. I, I read someplace about parking spaces and all, and I mean, I don't have to look at the picture because I've been there and mm -hmm. I don't see that 50 cars could be parked anywhere around this property. Okay, were you gonna say something? What I want to say that um, we have, we never said 50. Uh, the fire marshal, the uh, chief fire marshal, mm -hmm. Mr. Vasquez, he looked at the property and he looked at the inside because the inside sanctuary is 600 plus square feet, two offices, two bathrooms, and previously occupied by two other churches uh, before it was gifted to to us, and we also had uh, a contractor, an uh, engineer, do the parking, and the parking match the nine or ten that is required from us. We've talked with GDOT and got in on their requirements, and we've also talked with Department of Transportation and got their requirements. So, with the outline on the on the site plan that was submitted and the drawing uh, we we submitted four copies as well as um, two eight by tens and it shows that there was adequate parking on the side uh, miss Spann, I see you have uh, conditions zoning planning and zoning staff has with conditions <coughs> what are those conditions Staff conditions is that the, uh, the existing building, which is approximately 1,200 square feet, not we can't heat. If you, yeah. no. Staff conditions uh, state that the existing square footage, which is approximately 1,200 square feet, not be expanded, and that the property be only used for a place of worship. You say it cannot be expanded, or it can. can be. Cannot be expanded. That w that there are no additions be allowed to the uh, 1,200 square foot building that's existing on the site. And 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 then also just recommended that they meet all development standards as it relates to building and fire codes. The paving of the of the lot would be requirement would be required, and a minimum of 10 parking spaces would be the minimum, but that's based on the. Uh, seating area capacity and not the full building capacity that the first you stated with the fire marshal 
Okay, a church with 10 parking spaces, is that what you're saying? That's the minimum, based on the size of the, uh, the uh, sanctuary room or the uh, room for assembly. Well, you're you say pond, yes, I do. Okay. So with that, those stipulations, uh, most missions of a church is to grow. Do you not anticipate growing and expanding because you would not be able to do so if you occupy this, this uh, building? Yes, we do anticipate growing. And at that, you know, since this transitional period, you know, we've had some loss of membership, but we have an addition in the back 300 feet if we needed to. You but can, but we weren't planning on doing that right now. So as of right now, this is adequate for us right now. Hmm. And um, here's the site plan that shows where the parking, um, Ms. Fan, I believe you also have that uh, latest uh, site plan that shows uh, Ms. Hammerick the exact parking arrangements. And yes. You said there's 300 feet mm -hmm. behind the building. Bishop. Uh, yes, the, um, the property size is 150 by 300 feet. Um, I don't know if you can put the, uh, put the uh, there it is right there. You just passed it. That's it right there. It's 150 by 300 feet. And also, um, as this building was gifted uh, to us by a local businessman that we have known uh, for almost 40 years, uh, we recognize the fact that we can only get so many people in that building right now. But so, in essence, it's going to be a starter ministry for us. But as we grow, we may have to go to, like many churches have to go to different locations uh, as they grow. But we want to use this building as a starter church, looking, looking to grow, expecting to grow, and will grow, but we want to use it as a starter church to start off with because it's a, it's a great location. Uh, it has been used as a church uh, in the past, and so we recognize that it's small beginnings, but the Bible tells us not to despise small beginnings. And you're clear you have to pay the, the parking lot. Absolutely. We, we, uh, we clear that we have to follow everything that's in the guidelines for us to follow, and we will do that. All right. I will add that there will be some noted variances that would have to occur with the uh, development of that site and with the, with the uh, parking being provided. The, there is a 50-foot a buffer required along the, in this case, it would be the left side of, this, of, the, uh, do, of, the, of the structure there. There's a dwelling located, residential properties located on that side. So a 50-foot buffer will be required along that property line. So, uh, Can you the, get the 50? No, oh, there, no, there's not adequate room right. there for a buffer and parking at this time. So mm -hmm. in order for them to get that parking in, they would be a variance before the Board of Zoning Appeals. Well, I mean, I, I like your mission and what you all are doing and all, but as a church, I just think this is not the appropriate site or space for that. Can I also say, um, Commissioner, uh, we took the opportunity on Sundays to visit all of the local churches mm -hmm. in the area. And I could, you know, name names, mm -hmm. but just in that area, we have more parking than some have. And some, most of the churches in that area, uh, since we've been in Clayton County 38 years, so we live about two miles from that area, so we know kind of what's going on. And most of them have not really grown that substantial amount. So, uh, in, and to the right is a shopping center, and that's occupied by six businesses. And we have more parking than they do. Yeah. I just, you know. I just wanted to say to the right, the commercial side. I've been there. Yes, ma'am. They have six businesses, and we're, we have more parking than they, they do, you know. But they welcome us in the community because they feel it would be good for their business. Commissioner. Uh, at this time, I, I just don't think that's a usable property size. Parking, like I said, I've been there. We could barely turn around to get out. And all, and I, I just have to uh, recommend denial at this time. Chair, second. A second, Mr. Chair. Any other questions? 
comments, statements. Mayor no, Mr. I, Mr. Chair, I just have one question. Commissioner. Did you say that your population of um, members, is it homeless as well? You said that? or No. No, uh, you didn't? When we were the at Motel the 6 missions. and the okay. other areas. Uh, but because of the prolonged um, redeveloping phase of us being there, uh, you know, the property gifted at 2015, we, that's why Bishop said we're kind of starting all over because we've lost some people throughout the years because of, you know, uh, so the membership have suffered, you know, a lot because of, you know, going through the phases of, you know, the redevelopment. But we feel that, you know, uh, we have adequate parking on the side. And like we said, when, if you were just to go and look at some of the other churches in that area, they have less you know, parking than we do. And even the one that is up on the highway, Living Waters, they came from um, the 7-Eleven building. Like Bishop said, small beginning. They started there at the 7-Eleven, and they have a small amount of parking. I believe they have less than we have not the old location. And even Divine Faith, they came from that building on the side, which is a small parking. And then they uh, has advanced to where they are across the street. So both those locations were small as well as ours, Commission. Okay, well we have a motion on the floor in a second. And uh, are there any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. So four one it passes. Four three two it passes. That no, it, it got turned down. It got turned down. Yes, three two it got turned down. Yeah, your request got turned down. Okay, Madam Clerk. Um, there is no other business other than we will, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session for real estate, litigation, and personnel. Is there a second? Uh, is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chair. I'll second the motion. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> All right, is there a motion to reconvene? Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Mr. Reed. Uh, Mr. Chairman and board, I have a request for approval of a settlement agreement between the county and Gregory Goler in the amount of $7,500 relating to an accident that occurred on or around January 17, 2018 on or near Highway 138, 10 feet east of Terra Boulevard, unincorporated Clayton County, Georgia. I uh, recommend uh, or request that the board authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expense. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ms. Adams. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, request authority for the chairman to execute and the board to approve a lease agreement between Brooks Property, excuse me, Brothers Properties, Phoenix LLC in Clayton County, Georgia for 2,282 square feet at the 1895 Phoenix Road Boulevard or Phoenix Road property for use by the health department. It's a one-year lease, $17 a square foot, monthly 32 32 83 and an annual of $38,794. Uh, the term would begin upon, uh, upon execution of the lease agreement. Uh, this, as we noted, is, uh, will, be a, will be funds that will come out of the money already allocated to the health department from the county pro, uh, funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Are there any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's Thank unanimous. The board will now hear public comments. Citizens will be given three minutes maximum time limit to speak before the Board of Commissioners. Please state your name and county of residency for the record. Speak clearly into the microphone. And speakers should be courteous, respectful, and not make any disparaging remarks or use abusive language when addressing the board. Dr. Henry Anderson. And Doctor, as you're coming forth, this board likes, would like to extend our condolences on your recent loss, sir. Welcome back, Dr. Anderson. Thank you very much, and thank you for your words of 
Condolences in the passing of my mother. Thank you very much, Chairman Turner, for your kind words. Henry Anderson, Unincorporated, Clayton County, Hampton, Georgia. During my public comment in session earlier this year on Tuesday, February 20th, 2018, on my evaluation of Clayton County Commissioner of District 1, Mrs. Sonna Singleton Gregory, and on Tuesday, March 20th, 2018, of Clayton, of Clayton County Commissioner of District Number 2, Ms. Gail Hambry, that both of you earned negative marks of disapproval, dissatisfaction, and a citizen rebuke due to you both, along with the Vice Chairman and Commissioner of District Number 4, Mr. Michael Edmondson, and also Clayton County Commissioner of District Number 3, Mrs. Felicia Franklin Warner, for voting in a 4 1 consensus vote. Chairman Turner was a single vote in opposition to discontinue the televising the public comment on live streaming on the Commission meetings on the internet and on CCTV on Tuesday, February 21st, 2017. Because one year and six months later, the Clayton County Board of Commissioners meeting over two months ago on Tuesday, August the 7th, 2018, you both voted along with Vice Chairman and Commissioner Mr. Michael Emerson to restore the televised and the public coming and back on CCTV and live streaming on the internet, which started again at the commission meeting on Tuesday, August the 21st, 2018. Commissioner Gregory and Commissioner Hamburg, your negative marks of disapproval, dissatisfaction, and any citizens rebuke on your commissioner job performance evaluation is now removed and you both can fully enjoy, at least for my evaluation purposes, the outstanding, stellar, excellent, and exceptional commissioner job right. performance evaluation that you have and continue to enjoy from your constituents in your respective commission districts. With this and the seemingly now reversal of unpopular and some would say even very unpleasant and mean-spirited decisions that the both of you, along with Vice Chairman and Commissioner Mr. Michael Emerson, have made that caused many Clayton County citizens to be displeased upset, unhappy, and even mad with all three of you. All of you have started to establish goodwill, standing, favor, respect, and esteem with the citizens of Clayton County who do not live in your district, but were nevertheless impacted by the decision that all three of you have made. It is my sincere hope that all three of you, Commissioner Mrs. Gregory, Commissioner Ms. Hamburg, and Vice Chairman and Commissioner Mr. Michael Emerson will continue your actions of goodwill, pleasantries, and even acts of kindness and niceties toward the citizens of Clayton County and continue to, to reverse your unpopular commission decisions so that the majority of the Clayton County citizens will once again look very favorably with great respect, admiration, and even high esteem as you, Vice Chairman Mr. Michael Emerson, conclude your three-year your three-term 12 years of service as Commissioner of Clayton County Commission District Number 4, and as you Commissioner Mrs. Sonna Singleton Gregory in 2019, will be the sole number one senior commissioner in terms of length of service on the Clayton County Board of Commissioners, and as you Commissioner Ms. Hamburg, will be the number two commissioner in terms of length of service on the Clayton County Board of Commissioners. I will resume in giving the crime statistical information, empirical data, and numbers on all of the eight major crime categories for unincorporated Clayton County, as well as all of Clayton County in the next Clayton County Board of Commissioners regular business meeting. And again, Chairman Thur Turner, Commissioner Mrs. Felicia Franklin, one and all of you, thank you for your, again, words of kindness and condolences and sympathies and the passes of my mother. Good day. Antonio White. Commissioner, good evening, Chairman. My name is Antonio Antoine White. I'm a citizen of Clayton County. I stand before you tonight to file a complaint against the Division of Child Support Services in Clayton County. The reason why I'm before the board because everything that interact with child support is under Clayton County. I'm a victim of identity theft. On July 26, 2012, one of my customers in South Clayton Motor stole my identity. September 2000, September uh, of 2013, I was notified by child support stating that I had a child by this woman coming out of North Carolina. For the last six years, I, due to deprivation, I cannot afford an attorney, so I've been fighting them on my own. This child has no birth certificate on file. The Social Security number the Division of Child Support has is an invalid number with Social Security. So tonight, I am before the board to file a complaint on Les Myers, Leslie Gresham, W.T. Watts out of Sisson District Attorney's Office, Shawana Bird Enforcer, Virginia, Virginia Anderson. It's no way I can get into, Gwendolyn Carter was the judge that gave me the order, the initial order back in May of 2014. She stamped the order. I've been in many court systems. i never seen an order stamped by a judge. I've been challenging division of child support within this county. I cannot go to the clerk's office and file a motion to see a superior court judge. I did that in October of this year. Les Myers took me over here to the front of Stephen Siskoski he put my wife and my daughter and myself out of his courtroom. This is injustice. When I stood here tonight and said the Pledge of Allegiance, justice and liberty for all, I'm excluded from that in Clayton County. 
So now tonight I'll present you all a complaint on a division of child support in this county asking for a full investigation on why I have been denied due process, why I have been denied the right to see this child's social security number from issued through the Social Security Administration or even give me a birth certificate showing the sex, the date, the age, or the, or the, or the place the child was born. Now here I am with an order from child support stating that I am a father of a child. Now let me remind you, I've been married 31 years. I have five children, 40, 30, 32, 23, 22. I have not, never neglected none of my children. Les Miles has controlled this issue from the word go. I have discussed issues with Governor Deal's office, AIG, I have did police reports, I have did everything in my power to try to suffice this issue of this child. The only thing I'm asking is Department of Children, uh, uh, Child Support Services to produce a certified birth certificate showing this child exists. I don't know nowhere else to go but to you all tonight. So I ask, can I give you the timeline of all the motions I filed since 2014, a total of 21 complaint letters on Robin questions, Tangela Gray. Uh, I have wrote, I have wrote to uh, IEG, Attorney General's office. I've done everything in my power to try to get child support to produce the necessary documents to show life of this child. I don't know nowhere else to go but here tonight. Now, since Les Myers controlling me in Superior Court, he say, Gwendolyn Carter, do not, do your, not. Your time is up, sir. Thank I you, hate sir. to cut you off, but let me say this. We'll accept your paperwork, but there's not much or anything that this board can do. Uh, we will look at what you are presenting to us. You seems like It seems like you have spoken to the AG's office uh, Secretary of State's office, have you <coughs> filed a, a bar complaint through the state? I have not filed a bar complaint. If you want to file a complaint against a judge or any of the attorneys, then I would recommend that you go there if you have a valid claim. May I respond to you, sir? Sure. The reason why I stand before the Clayton County because child support collects under the federal program dollars for Clayton County. They get 66 cents per dollar, 33 cents per state. So that's why I came before the, you, Mr. I Chairman. I don't think we get any of that money, though. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Oh, you spoke to him? Mr. Chairman, what I'm saying to you, everything I do is under Clayton County. Clayton County Superior Court, the Sheriff's Office, Clayton County, Clerk's Office. If I'm being deprived of due process where I can't file a motion to go before the judge who issued this order on me, then this is a monopoly. This contract that I, I'm in is a monopoly. It only benefits them for the county. <laughs> Well, so, everyone that you are speaking about complaining on are elected officials. Mm -hmm. We have no authority over another elected official, this no. body here. Mm -hmm. But maybe you can direct me in the right way I need what to about go. It's legal aid. Have you tried they said that I don't qualify because I have a misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. Every door I go through is closed. This is not a lot of bloody, bloody nose <laughs> or a black eye. It's about life and death. And we sympathize with your position, sir. I'm just telling you point blank, being honest and upfront with you that there's not much this board can do. But we will take your complaint and take a look at it. I, rec I would refer you to the State Bar Association. Maybe they'll have a recommendation for you as well. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir, thank you. Vicki B. With a brief. B. W. Vicki? Vicki B. Not here. Okay, right. moving on. Donna Mullis. Mullins, I'm sorry. Good evening, commissioners. Um, thank you for, uh, I'm Donna Mullins. Uh, I live in unincorporated uh, Clayton County in Ellenwood, Georgia. Thank you for taking time to hear the concerns of the, concitizen, the citizens tonight, even if it is a little late. Um, I would like to address zoning and development issues in Ellenwood, Georgia. I understand from Ms. Spann that a recent um, zoning application, rezoning application has been withdrawn by the applicant and that was very good news to the citizens of the area. But we seem to be doing this quite frequently. Um, Ms. Warner, uh, Franklin Warner, you, you mentioned that there's a zoning mess in Clayton County and there really is and, and we really need to find a way to take a look at getting the zoning fixed so that we can have win-win situations here in the county. Win for the county and win for the citizens. There's no reason for anybody to lose. There's lots of property out there, lots of things that can be done, and we all can win if we just would. 
I had the opportunity to meet with the two recent builders that wanted to build <coughs> warehouses in Ellenwood. I met with Mr. Richards of Reliant and Mr. Westmoreland, who is the uh, attorney for Johnson Controls, and I asked them a simple question. Would you want a warehouse in your neighborhood? They emphatically said no. Neither do we. So, ladies and gentlemen, if they were living here in Ellenwood, which they don't, then they would be asking you to vote no to more warehouses also. We don't need any more. Um, the Marty guy said not everybody wants to go downtown. They don't. Not everybody wants to go to Henry County or McDonough either. We've got lots of area over in Ellenwood that we could promote and really build. The New Mountain View, beautiful. I love that. I wish y'all would consider that for my area. But if you'll remember that international Connolly Road that comes out of the international airport lands in Ellenwood. You need to be thinking about that with your development processes because you certainly could do a lot of good down there with that main road coming out of there. I used the statistics that Mr. Westmoreland provided and it stated that a 120,000 square foot general business entity would bring an additional 6,000 uh, cars to the area. If each car spends $20 a day, some more, some less, you're looking at $3.5 million in tax revenue for one small general business, 120,000 square foot place. Multiply that by two, ladies and gentlemen, and you're looking at some good revenues for the county. While there would be obviously more accidents because there would be more autos, um, I would like to remind you that there are more fatalities when tractor trailers are involved, regardless of how many there are. In the opening prayer, the pastor said, he wanted to pray for the leaders, that's you. He would like to see God's will done. God wants to see his children protected. You have been called to protect us. We're citizens of Clayton County, and you have been called to, number one, protect us before you do anything else. That should be your first priority, to look after the citizens. Granted, we need revenues, and there can be win-win revenues. There's $200,000 homes going around uh, Williamson Road, Grant Road, Anvil Block Road. You just approved down in Mitchell's Meadow, $300,000 homes. Look at the area that you're wanting to destroy before you destroy it. Thank, Thank you. Alanda <coughs> Quay. Alanda Quay. <coughs> Linda Jones. Good evening, my name is Linda Jones and I live in unincorporated Ellenwood. It's good to see you all again tonight. Uh, and I wanna thank you for listening. And I always like to start off with a story and I hope to combine it with the point that I'm going to make. Uh, now I like to travel from time to time and um, when I travel, I really enjoy going to countries. But when I am on that plane coming back and the pilot says, we are in the airspace of the United States of America, I just get very, very excited. And when that plane lands, when that plane, plane lands on, the ground, on the ground, I really get excited because I love my country. I really love my country and my heart goes pitter patter. I remember being in law school many years ago and the amount of time and energy I spent completing assignments for classes uh, with certain timelines was really demanding. Yesterday I attended a law class and was reminded of the U.S. Constitution, First Amendment. No law abridging the freedom of speech. Although you listen when we continuously come before you with our concerns, no action is being taken to improve the issues that we constantly bring to the meetings. So are you really listening? Abe Lincoln in his Gettysburg Address presented a good summarization of democracy when he stated that the government is of the people, by the people, and for the people. That we shall have a new birth. We have dreams. Dreams can wear masks as wars that test whether we endure on the battlefield of life's peaks and valleys, constantly being hurled at us, but not necessarily a resting place for our dreams. This united strength will not perish with communities and elected officials working cohesively to make the world a better place to live not just some places, but all places that are represented in this, our immediate world. We must endure so that our forefathers did not die in vain. M.L. King, for instance, Rosa Parks. And I said all of that just to say I love my community, 
I want to feel heard by the people who represent us so our communities will reap positive benefits as others around us. No more warehouses and trucking companies. The communities near Anvil Block <laughs> and Bowl of Crest Roads need tender, loving care. We need that. And we ask that not only the constituents are doing this, but we ask you as the elected officials to hear us and respond by helping us. Also, please remind your employees to be tactful and diplomatic when talking to the public, especially Economic Development Office and Commission District 1 Office. Thank you. Mickey Garber. Before she comes up, I just have to say this, Ms. Jones, I, I recognize that part of the Ellen where you live in is DeKalb County. Larry Johnson and I have had some <coughs> discussions because um, just the way it's situated, you know, we'd love to annex that on into Clayton, you know, so that we could serve it better. And, and I think he would too, since um, I think there's been some issues with fire service out in that area just because of the locations and so forth. And also on last week, uh, just to let you know, uh, it initially, the developer, I told him initially I would not support this a petition. He continued, it's his right. And as his commissioner, I felt it was my duty to meet with him. I met with him, invited Ms. Mullins along with another citizen. So uh, again, I believe it was because of that meeting that he withdrew the petition because he knew there was no support there. I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Mr. Garber. Mickey Garber, Unincorporated, Rex, Georgia. I want to say congratulations to Mr. Clark for his uh, being nominated chairman of the Economic Development Authority. I want to also mention to Mr. Clark as he advocated for MARTA and that MARTA expressed to him that the reason things aren't moving quickly with MARTA is cause of lack of retail sales and collecting that half cent. Now, in order to advocate for a better Clayton County, you have to be able to multitask. And I speak of multitasking in this way. You must advocate for education. You must advocate for safety. You must advocate for cleanliness. And you must advocate for convenience. Because the quicker you make those places convenient for that shopper, the quicker you get to collect that half cent. <laughs> so keep all that in mind. Our lives are balanced between good and evil. And your next move tips the scale. Thank you. Thank you. Timothy Vondale Jefferson. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners. I uh, want to reiterate again, boy, as a citizen and a community leader, I uh, your name. Timothy Vondale Jefferson, Incorporated Clayton County. I uh, get phone calls, get concerns all the time. I think you heard a lot of them tonight as we try to deal with economic growth, which is job creation, and then we try to deal with economic development, which is a quality of life issue. I'm very, very pleased uh, uh, with the appointment of Mr. Rick Clark as the new chair of the Development Authority. Uh, I think that uh, with his aggressive leadership and partnering with all entities, I think that we can finally uh, get some things moving. The master plan, Mountain View in Old Dixie. Yeah. Wonderful concept, it's very much needed. But as I look at this issue, I'm um, looking at where is the funding coming from? 
how can we collectively come together as a team to find the developers, to find the funding to move this project forward? In 2020, and there will be a federal census report taken. Uh, we are in a state of urgency. We have 26 months left. We have to do something to change the numbers. If we don't do something to change the numbers as far as economic growth and economic development, our numbers will stay in place <coughs> for the next 10 years. So as we engage and we have meeting after meeting and concept after concept after concept, I think that it's critically important that we prioritize some things to get some dirt moving. And I believe, uh, after 40 years in construction, once the dirt start moving, developers start paying attention. Because right now, all we're doing is lip service, lip service, lip service. Where's the county going? What are we doing? So I think there's a sense of urgency that we must apply, you know what I mean? We're in the last quarter of 2018, but the first and third, second and third quarter of next year, I think that we need to have some bulldozers on the ground, making some things happen, and moving this county forward. So let's collectively together collaborate and make some things happen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Aretha Inslee. Good evening. My name is Aretha Inslee, unincorporated Clayton Hampton. This is very quick. I'm going to talk about our seniors because we're economically deprived sometimes. But the senior services in Clayton County are absolutely fabulous. We love it. They keep us young and active. But the problem, um, concern I have is that with the new technology that has been placed in in your in the county it has taken away our awards program and our awards points that's for our classes so what has happened is that we are paying quite a bit of money for our classes and with the awards points that gave us they would award us they would subtract it and so we're paying less money I tell you, just two people in our family, and we pay over $200 every five to six weeks for our classes. That seems like quite a bit of money when I guess we can go over to Planet Fitness or somewhere else, but the camaraderie and the love and everything that senior services provide for us is absolutely, I mean, you can't find it anywhere. So I'm going to ask you, with all this high tech, and these brilliant people and all the money we pay, is it possible? And I know our uh, director will let you know how to make that happen. Could you reinstate that? Please look at that. It's very important, very important to us seniors. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hensley. And yes, our seniors are very important to us as well. I was just gonna say, Ms. Hensley, I did already forward your concern uh, over to Chairman and Mr. COO, and I concur with you. We spend a lot of money in the county, and we got to figure out a way to make it happen. I don't care how many people use it. I agree. Pastor Pamela and Bishop D.C. Watson. That was his name. Well, they signed up. Maybe they wanted to say something afterwards, but I guess not. They're Are they here? <laughs> Pastor Watson, Bishop Watson. All right, that concludes public comment. <laughs> There being no further business for this board, I'll entertain the motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second the motion. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, it's unanimous.